Hi, uh, good afternoon. It's Monday, May 4th, and we're at Portland Parks and Recreation's Hoyt Arboretum. Um, today we're looking at the dove tree, um, which is Davidia involucrata. And dove tree just, I think, captures everybody's attention right now because it has these really amazing uh, sort of floral structures. Um, what we're seeing is the bract, so the white, um, that kind of hangs like dove wings, or is sometimes referred to as the handkerchief tree because it appears like there's these pieces of fabric hanging in the tree. This is a really large bract that actually goes around the flower structure. And the flower itself is this, this piece in here. Um, we can see all of the stamens um, that are around here, and then the style, the female part of the flower, is down at the base here. And this is going to set one kind of large ball fruit that we'll see in the fall. We'll see those big fruits. Um, they're kind of hard. They're not really like a soft fleshy fruit, but they're kind of a hard capsule. And this is uh, this structure kind of captures everyone's imagination. There's lots of debate about like why it exists. And you know, it does look like kind of an umbrella. And one of the theories about this bract is that it protects the pollen on the end of the stamen from being wet while um, it's being visited by insects and being moved around. Pollen has a pretty short lifespan when it's wet and so because this bloom time strikes at a wet time of the year in the parts of the world it's from, so throughout um, China um, where the, the species is from, um, quite often this can be a, a wet time of the year and so there's some theory that there's a real success from having its pollen protected from all the rain. Um, but it really looks absolutely fantastic. Um, the species is named after Pierre Armand David um, Davidia, and uh, he was an early plant explorer and probably most famous for being the first Westerner to see the panda bear. Um, so kind of an interesting guy, worth, uh, he's worth looking up and uh, he's got some really great stories about him, a uh, French um, missionary in the mid-1800s. Standing in front of is actually a cultivar, so a selection of Davidia, it's not the straight species, and this is the cultivar Sonoma. Um, this was selected because one of the traits of the species Davidia is they often don't bloom until the trees are 10 or maybe even 20 years old. Um, Sonoma is really great because it actually blooms when the tree is very young and it blooms just super heavy in bloom, which this tree shows that characteristic really well today. Um, so it has much more bloom than the straight species and it blooms at a, a younger age. So um, a lot more desirable um, in your yard than the straight species. One of the really great things about dove tree is even when it's not in bloom, which is just absolutely striking, the leaf itself is a, a really attractive leaf. Um, has this uh, fantastic shape. Um, nice uh, serrated edges and we actually find there's two um, considered variations on dove tree. Um, one that has kind of a downy underside which is kind of less common in the trade and then one that's more like green. We have both um, types of this at the Arboretum but typically in the trade um, you find this which is the variant um, Vilmornii and then um, this is the variant um, Involcrata, so it's Davidia Involcrata var Involcrata, and you can see how much more the downy um, underside, the pubescence that it has on the leaf. But the leaf has these really heavy, clear veins, and from the upper side, you can just see the venation and just a very beautiful leaf shape. Hi, uh, Martin Nicholson here at Hoyt Arboretum, and we're over in the dogwood collection and this is uh, one of the Pacific dogwood hybrids. So um, what we're looking at is a Cornus natalii, which is our Pacific um, native dogwood to this area. And um, it is a hybridized with um, Cornus florida. So this is a, a dogwood which is native to the East Coast, um, Southeastern United States. And one of the reasons for the hybridization is to overcome a, an anthracnose disease, which was pretty serious, um, was wiping out a lot of native dogwoods, and it really restricted the amount um, the native dogwoods were being used in the ornamental industry. Um, so 
the, the Florida dogwoods and also the Cornus Cousas, the Korean dogwoods, um, were more resistant to that. And so some breeders, so this was bred um, on Vancouver Island um, by a guy whose last name was Eddie. So he uh, selected this, this form in 1954 and um, we grow it pretty widely. It uh, has a lot of the characteristics of the Pacific dogwood, but it, it also mostly anthracnose resistant. Um, what we're looking at, these huge white structures are actually bracts. And so if you've been following along the video, we just looked at Davidia and Davidia has those bracts too, but the bloom was hanging down and the bracts were long and they covered the flower that was inside. With dogwood, we generally see the flowers being upright facing and these still these are the bracts and the flower is just this small cluster. This is getting many little flowers when these open, they're still hard. Um, this is where the flowers are going to occur. So each of these um, are little buds that are going to open up where the flower is. And so these huge bracts really dwarf the actual flower. Um, bracts structurally are more like leaves. They, they actually have veining kind of similar to a leaf. Um, so there's a lot of, lot of similarities between a bract which is a, a more of a modified leaf than a petal which is really a, a specialty structure um, within the flower and, and not all plants have petals and they have lots and lots of different shapes and styles to petals obviously too. But what we're looking at here are bracts and um, they're pretty spectacular at the moment. Um, it is White Wonder is definitely living up to its name. It is absolutely covered in bloom and um, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's overwhelming even.